Hi, Derek here with an example of how we can connect AppSheet to the application integration platform. Uh, so first, this is a very simple AppSheet application. We just have three records. Uh, the cool thing about it is that it's connected to Jira. So uh, I can do all the basic CRUD operations. I can uh, add a new record. And uh, when I do that, the change is gonna be synced back to my Jira instance. There's no intermediate table required here. And uh, sure enough, there's my new record that just came into Jira. Uh, I can also edit them, I can delete them, uh, all the basic CRUD operations. That being managed by an API data source. So let's look at the API data source settings. Uh, when you go to my account, you can add an Apigee data source. Uh, you, you can use manual for read only, open API spec for read write. Uh, when you use an open API spec, you'll, you can choose between API key and OAuth. I'm using OAuth. You choose that you have to provide a client id and client secret and you have to provide a, a url for your open api spec i'm hosting my open api spec in apogee uh, but you can really host anywhere you could also ho host it on swagger the main thing is that when you hit that endpoint it just needs to return your open api spec in the yaml format so let's look at apogee i have uh, three proxies managed here the first is for my open api spec and this is really simple. There's just one assigned message policy here, and all that content is just being uh, returned in um, in a set payload uh, component of an assigned message policy. The open API specs, uh, they might be a little intimidating the first time, but they're really not too bad. They all follow the same structure. Uh, first, you have the base path of your target. Uh, so I'm sending this to my Apigee reverse proxy. And then the Apigee reverse proxy is going to send that on to the application integration platform. So this base path here refers to my Apigee reverse proxy. And then I have all the end endpoints I can append. So I can append slash Jira issues with a get command, and I'll get a list of all the issues. I can post. Uh, I can hit this uh, endpoint with a get or a put, and I can uh, send a delete operation. Uh, then there's a security section. This is where I specify cl client credentials and I give the endpoint for where I can get an access token. And then finally, I have the schema. So this just shows what structure to expect the API response in. Let's take a look at the OAuth proxy. Uh, so this is another simple one. I have a conditional flow. So when I send a post request to the slash access token endpoint, it will trigger the generate access token policy and it'll return an OAuth uh, token. Let, next, let's look at the Apigee reverse proxy. So this is where a lot of the magic is happening. The reverse proxy is receiving the requests from AppSheet and then forwarding them to the application integration platform's endpoint. So this target endpoint, that's for the application integration platform. I have, uh, in my preflow, I have a verify OAuth token. Uh, so that'll happen for uh, all requests. And I remove that OAuth token uh, from the header. And uh, when I deploy this proxy, I have the option to attach a service account. So I'm using that service account, which has uh, authorization to use the application integration platform API to authorize that request. So I'm removing this uh, OAuth header from AppSheet and I'm attaching the auth token from my service account. And there's a process required for getting that auth token, but Apigee is managing all that for me. So I didn't have to do any additional configuration. I just attached that service account to Apigee and it, and it handles that, that process for me. Uh, next, let's look at the target endpoints. So each CRUD operation has a different integration and I have a conditional flow for each of those integrations. So take, uh, let's look at the get all issues, for example. Uh, when a request comes in with a, a get method to the slash Jira issues endpoint, it'll trigger this conditional flow. And the conditional flow is setting a payload. And the payload contains this just this JSON object with a trigger ID. And this is uh, determined by the application integration flow. So I'll show you that next. And I have the same process. So like for create issues, I do the same thing. Uh, I specify that uh, trigger ID. And then in the case of a, a, um, a post, I also have to 
you know, add the content that I want to create. Uh, similarly for update and delete, uh, each of these has an assigned message that specifies some payload. Uh, lastly, on the reverse proxy, all requests when they come um, when they come back from the uh, application integration platform, I'm using this JavaScript policy, uh, and all this is doing is just extracting the specific key from that response structure that AppSheet wants and specifying that as the full payload response from Apogee to AppSheet. And that's just, um, that's required to meet the format expectations of AppSheet. Uh, this is the cool thing when you use application integration platform is that this JavaScript policy is really simple. Uh, you just take that key, extract it and set it as the payload. You don't have to do any additional modification of the JSON object. That's all done in the application integration platform. Okay, so that's Apigee. Next, let's look at the integration. Uh, so here's my integration and uh, integrations. Uh, I have one for each method. So let's look at the get all issues. And pretty simple. Uh, first, I have this trigger. And this is that trigger ID that I showed earlier in the assigned message. Uh, so when I set that payload, I, I specify this trigger ID here. And then I'm using a data mapping policy to, uh, excuse me, this is a connector policy. So this is, uh, uh, I add JIRA as a connector to my integrations account, and then I can use it in my integration flows. Uh, so this one's uh, doing a, a list operation on the issues table of JIRA. And then this one is a data mapping. Uh, so for this particular um, response, the application integration platform was returning the JSON object with capital ID and AppSheet wants it in lowercase ID. So I used a data mapping policy to make that update. And then I set the uh, JSON object from the API as the AppSheet output object. And this is what is being grabbed by the uh, JavaScript policy inside of Apigee. Uh, so uh, that's the data mapping policy. And I, I have something similar for each of my integrations. So let's look at the create one for a minute. Um, this one, uh, same thing, I've got an API trigger. Uh, in this case, I had to do a data mapping policy before the connector. Uh, so this one is taking the um, components from the request from AppSheet and setting that as the uh, output. So, sorry, it's actually doing two things. It's doing the same thing where it's it's uh, converting that ID from lowercase up to uppercase, since that's what the, the connector expects. And then it's also taking the object received from the request and setting that as a specific uh, input variable to the connector. And then the connector here, is doing the uh, create operation on my issues table. So the cool thing about this when you use application integration platform is that this is um, really easily converted from one data source to another. You can use any of the supported integrations. Uh, here's a full list. So we have uh, integrations with GCP services and with several um, external applications like Jira Cloud. Uh, some of the ones that people ask about with AppSheet are like SAP or Snowflake or ServiceNow, uh, the configuration of these integrations is pretty universal at this point. So you just plug in a different connector and you can use these different enterprise data sources. So that's how everything's set up. Let's just take a look at all of this in action. So I'm gonna come over to my reverse proxy here and I'm gonna to go to the debug, debug tab in Apigee and start up a debug session. And then let's come back to AppSheet. And I'm going to create a record in Jira. And I'll save that in. We should see that show up inside of Jira as soon as that change ends up syncing. There it is. And then let's take a look. Here it is in our um, debug session in Apigee. So let's go look at this post request. Here's all those policies. So first it verified the OAuth token, it removed that from the auth header, it checked conditional flows, and it saw that it matches the slash 
uh, slash Jira issues with a post uh, method, and then um, uh, use that assigned message policy to add the payload. So that set the trigger ID and it includes all the content of that new record. And then it sends that to our um, application integration endpoint. Application integration did all of its stuff. It sends it, it, sends it out, does the create command. And then um, in this case, there's nothing to return back to AppSheet. But if you were doing like a, a list all or something, then this uh, custom JavaScript would pull that particular item out of the response. And then that's what would be sent back to AppSheet. Um, before it did the post, I actually did do a get. So let's just look. Here's the response that goes back to AppSheet. And you'll see um, it's uh, Jira issues is the name of the first key. And then its object is an array of JSON objects. And each uh, key of that nested object corresponds to what's interpreted as a column inside of the app sheet application. So you see a column for key and then the value and then column for issue type ID and then the value. And this is exactly what's specified. If you go to the docs uh, for an Apigee API data source uh, for app sheet, you'll, you'll see this exact format is, uh, is what app sheet's expecting. So that's the purpose of the middleware here. If we just went straight to the Jira API, it would give us this response back in some very different format. So the value of Apigee and the application integration platform is um, uh, serving as a translation between what AppSheet expects and what the end service expects. And then again, using integration just makes that really repeatable across all the different data sources. Uh, so there you go. Um, that is an example of connecting AppSheet to the application integration platform. A uh, really simple app here, but you know some cool things that you can do from there is like connect it or create an AppSheet chatbot. So you could serve all of your Jira tickets for the logged in user with you know some particular status uh, right up in Google Chat. Uh, with chat apps, you can also uh, perform actions. So maybe you need to approve a particular request or update a particular ticket. You could do it right in chat and with AppSheet, you can have multiple data sources. So you could be doing that, those updates to Jira right alongside updates to Salesforce or pulling information from your ERP system. Uh, there's a lot of extensibility here. And I'd love to see some of the ideas that the community has to get the most out of this design pattern. Thanks for watching.